much longer. Um, again, um, welcome to our Alternative Education and Career, pa career Pathways workshop. And if you are, you know, if you plan to attend that workshop, you're in the right workshop. Um, welcome, uh, welcome, you know, folks from the West Coast, welcome folks from the East Coast. And Miss Layla also has been dropping questions on the chat and we appreciate you guys for answering the questions and, you know, hope you guys enjoy our presentation today. Um, also, I just want, before we start, um, please make sure to um, turn off your cameras as this session is being recorded. So um, we don't have uh, a lot of issues when it comes to publishing this uh, presentation to the public, especially for those that couldn't not attend. So before we start, I just wanna kind of name a few digital community guidelines. Um, please use the raise hand feature to indicate that you have a question or comment to share. Use the chat box to share any relevant comments or thoughts that you have uh, when it comes to our presentation. We encourage questions and thoughts to create a collaborative environment. So, you know, if you have any you know, issues or concerns or you have, a, you have anything to want to share when it comes to the presentation, please feel free to use the chat. And um, we're going to have a question and answer portion too at the end. So um, that's when we'll ask if you, uh, if you continue to have your right hand raised, we'll ask for you guys, you, you get a chance to unmute yourself and maybe voice up the question that you have. But for now, um, throughout the presentation, if you can just chat in your questions, if you have any, and um, we're going to introduce ourselves in a second. So um, we're going to introduce ourselves. My name is, uh, you guys can all call me JC. My name is Juan Carlos Villanueva. It's my first year he here. First year here at TGR Foundations. I'm the program manager and been working in student development for quite some time now. I started over there at um, Boys and Girls School of Carson, moved over to uh, San Pedro at the Harbor area, and now here at TGR Foundation. And it's been a been been awesome experience uh, being able to support students from you know, uh, hearing uh, support students here in California across cities. And my colleague is. Hi, everyone. My name is Andres Kwamani. It's uh, nice to be here with you guys. Uh, and I'm the program coordinator at the TGR Foundation. So I work with JC um, in terms of getting students prepped for college, um, work with them when they're juniors, all the way until they're graduating from college. So. Um, I also like JC started recently, so it's it's good to learn. I'm still learning a lot, but um, excited to be here today and excited to show you guys some alternative options that you might have. And our wonderful colleague who is helping us with all the technical stuff today and the chat is Miss Layla. Uh, she is also one of our program coordinate program coordinator at the DC um, site. So, you know, please feel free to say, hello, Ms. Layla, you know, you're wonderful. She'll be answering your questions today on the chat. And let's go over our agenda for today. Ooh. So today we'll be, we're gonna be kind of recognizing the effects of COVID-19 uh, before, you know, we start the whole presentation. And then we're gonna be talking about um, different pathways and advantages and just the uh, opportunities at the community college. We're gonna be talking about apprenticeships and micro degrees. We're also gonna be discussing certificate programs and trade schools. And not, but not least, we're gonna be talking about additional options like job corps and what City Years offers. And so, <clears throat> you know, I hope you guys enjoy our presentation today. So kind of just wanna discuss our current trend in higher education today. Um, now spring 2021 undergraduate enrollment has been down 5.9% compared to 2020. So. Since the pandemic hit us, um, higher education via the four-year programs, the two-year program has declined. And a lot of the issues that are stemming from uh, the pandemic is you know, due to financial security. And because you know, a lot of families are afraid to have, or students are afraid to go out in the community or commingle with their fellow students, especially when it comes to going to a four-year or two-year program because of you know, um, contracting the, the virus. So, you know, lately we've been dealing with a lot of um, decline in higher education. And this next slide is that, you know, many students um, are deciding also to take, um, to take 
to not take their post-secondary classes, especially this fall, because as we talked about, as I talked about in the, um, the prior slides to this, is that a lot of students are experiencing a lot of financial issues when it comes to pandemic. A lot of households are being affected. So about 63% of students are saying that because, you know, financial situations in my family, in my household, that, you know, it, it, it's um, demotivating me to continue to take courses. And then 46% has also noted that, you know, due to the fear of contracting the coronavirus has, um, you know, instilled in them that, you know what, it's better for me to just stay home so I can be safe and my family safe. And also, um, you know, 59% uh, of students has also shared that, you know, they preferred to care for loved ones during this um, hard times instead of taking classes and they've been and they have been postponing, um, you know, the, the education side of the things that they want to do in their, in their, in their, you know, general uh, life, per se. And so, um, you know, uh, it's been really, really, uh, you know, we've been seeing a lot of decline when it comes to higher education. So um, with this being said, I'd like, I just want to kind of, you know, ask you guys, were you guys surprised about the statistics? Um, if you guys can put it in the chat or what are your thoughts just to see, you know, um, if, if you guys are were aware before this presentation, just kind of, you know, we can have a, a good uh, back and forth conversation in the chat. Yes, you know, I've seen a comment, you know, um, some were surprised, some were aware. I think that, you know, as we look into the pandemic and as we look how it's, you know, it's extended, you know, instead of the year, now it's two years, now we're going to the third year. So it's, it's really, has been really, really difficult for, you know, especially a lot of families. So yeah, some, yeah, I, I can see how some are not surprised. And some. So as we move on to our presentation, um, I'd like to move on to uh, talking about the community colleges. Um, so within the community college system, I'm sure, you know, if you guys aren't aware, uh, students can spend more time and less money exploring different majors at the CC. So if we have a student or if we have household members, you know, that's um, kind of questioning, you know, the, 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 what's happening or don't have an idea of what they want to do, or kind of just like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm in kind of like a, a lost kind of way. The CC is awesome place to go because you can take many different courses, many different courses and subject areas that you can explore to at a lesser price in comparison to taking classes at the four year where it can cost you up to 15 to $2,000 just to take a couple of units at the four year university where at the CC it will cost you between 35 to $40. It depends on what community colleges um, you apply to. Here in California, it's around the 40 to $35 range. And usually within the community college, it's a smaller class size. And a lot of students, especially students who are seeking um, career areas that they wanna go into, they have more connection with the professors at the CC because you know it's a smaller class size in comparison to if you take college courses, maybe at George Washington University or UCLA, you're having more st students in your classroom that um, provides less opportunity for students to communicate with their professors in comparison to the CC. And also aside from, you know, if the student is not a four-year or a two-year bound or want to get their associate degree or associate degree for transfer, a lot of CCs now, not just in California, as you'll see, we're going to provide examples here in California, but a lot of CCs now offer a lot of certificate programs and vocational programs. If you guys, um, you know, are are not aware, but it, uh, it's the revamp of the community college has started to provide, you know, trade certificate and vocational programs that students can do without having to take a two year or four year program. And you know, as we see, as here in California, I, I think that not only in California but throughout nationally that, you know, the community college at the time was very, um, it was not successful. And I think that government came together and 
kind of put together their minds and resources to kind of revamp a lot of community colleges in all our areas, not just in California, that they start to put together good financial assistance for students who are who are not going straight to the four-year and then planning to go into the two-year program that they provided um, here in California, they call what we call a California Promise, where they provided students a one-year or two-year free program who are students coming from high school. And aside from the financial assistance, they started to provide academic support and student services and just many different um, program areas where to help guide students and help students get out of the CC as quick as possible and as accurate as possible. And I say national, I think this has been done nationally because also in Maryland is the same. Uh, they have provided additional services to students in uh, students of Maryland. Um, and you know, if you're if you're not aware or if you're in a different location aside from what we viewed, um, we're gonna give you guys some tips on how to kind of find out more information um, as we go into this presentation. And some of the tips, so here's a tip, right? So some of the tips I think if you are, you know, are, are not aware or want to know more, especially I know we have um, we have attendees from New York, Detroit. I think it's good to kind of see if if you're if you're already if you're not already in this um, community college or if you're not taking courses and you're planning to like maybe you know what it is something that I want to do, but where do I go? I think that the best thing to do is go to your local community college, see your counselor immediately. And if you're already at the community college, make sure that you talk to your counselor because counselors are trained to be able, are trained to guide you to create a plan for you to be able to kind of um, tackle or kickstart uh, the career that you want, right? Make sure that, you know, when you're meeting with your counselor, you develop an educational plan. A lot of counselors are trained to develop that to make sure that you guys identify what you need to do at the CC level to either transfer to a four year or to be able to follow a vocational or a certificate plan. Um, because each community college nationally, I believe have also transfer centers where, you know, if you decide, you know what, I thought I wanted to do a vocational, but now that I'm talking to this professor, I wanna go to a four year now. So I suggest to also be also advised to go into your transfer, uh, transfer center um, when, uh, wherever uh, community college or wherever location you are. Also consider uh, taking uh, career planning courses at the CCs if you are unaware of what you wanna do, because these are can fall into trade areas, tr um, trade careers, vocational and certificate careers. And you know, at the end of the day, you have to also be aware of uh, professor um, office hours. And I know that a lot of professors are very awesome when it comes to office hours, especially if they know that you're willing and you're always seeking that information that they're gonna, um, you know, they're gonna take time, take time to meet with all of, uh, with all of you. And also make sure if you're already at the CC, we suggest um, if you plan to transfer or if you plan to uh, go into a, you know, uh, be successful at the career that you have to get good grades. Um, I think that sometimes um, with the lack of experience of students graduating out of college, lack of experience students graduating at the two year, they don't understand how grades can be useful when it comes to getting that first interview or getting that first job. Also, I mean, you know, like I said, attend a lot of events and workshops because so you, the more network you can do, the more you meet people, the more they can guide you in different places and, and, and areas where you don't, you don't necessarily saw the first time that now you're seeing it because you're going to many different um, individuals and people, um, you know, networking one-on-one. And you know, always just stay um, on top of your 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 program or whatever um, uh, path you choose, whether the four year, the two year, or the vocational or, or the certificate areas that um, you choose. Also, I just want to show you as well. Um, you know, I keep talking about what it what, what's transfer. Many community colleges, not just in California, have a, had have uh, partnerships with many four years. If the four year track is what you're looking for. Um, uh, four-year transfer pathway, um, just as what I'm showing you guys, where it provides you descriptively what classes you need to take in order to transfer. So this one I'm showing you guys is a uh, transfer pathway track to Georgetown University from Montgomery College, where it shows you very, um, you know, detailed on what class you need to take and um, the different the different courses that George Washington will allow to be transferred at their university. And, you know, I, I always encourage um, that 
the best way to identify these is, you know, it's the counselor. Uh, always talk to the counselor to be able to, so they can show you guys the different transfer path that they have, uh, that they have partnership with and the college that they have partnership with to be able to get you guys on the right track. And also I wanna show, get, provide additional examples of what, the different transfer programs here in California that hoping that it will encourage you guys to go ahead and talk to your local community colleges to see if they have the similar transfers. Here in California, we have what we call associate degree for transfer where um, California State Universities have a partnership with CCs to follow this track to help them become um, more uh, easy. So it makes it easier for students to transfer off to a CC to a uh, CSU. We also have a program called Transfer Alliance Program where we call it TAP here in California, where we provide um, uh, the different courses that if the student wants to go to UCLA, this is specifically for UCLA, we're gonna they, they, a detailed course list of what students need to uh, take, uh, uh, depending on what major that they choose within this transfer path and the GPA that they need. Usually, the GPA within the TAP program is about three point five, but as you know, um, you know here in California, UCLA is one of the most competitive schools, so you have to have a, a better grade than a two point five if you really, you know, wanna wanna have a higher chance of getting accepted. But within the transfer program, you're you know, in comparison to your, 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 the people that are not in the program, you're more likely to get into UCLA being in this program. Um, we also have what we call a UCLA, UC Berkeley transfer program here in California. Some community colleges will call it differently. Some co community colleges like Cypress College call it starting point mentorship opportunity, where this is not like a transfer path, but students from UC Berkeley come in to help uh, counsel students at the CC who wants to transfer to UC Berkeley, kind of just guiding them and giving them every um, you know tip, tips and tricks to get into um, UC Berkeley, and then we have what we call a transfer admission guarantee. So you know how we have the associate degree for transfer. We have the transfer admission guarantee where um, it provides opportunities for students who wants to go into a UC but don't know what a specific UC they, they want to go into. This is a, a track or a plan that students can follow to give them a more higher chance of getting into a UC system, um, and you know. I, I just want to also kind of state that, you know, yes, these are California programs that we're stating right now, but I do encourage everyone if you're, you know, located, uh, you know, in DC, New York, I know for a fact that, you know, it, it, it starts where um, go ahead and contacting your local community colleges and just seeing what they offer as far as transfer path um, to help you, or maybe, you know, begin your, your, your journey if you want to go and attend a four-year university. <clears throat> and then I'm going to call in my colleague here to start talk, talking about the apprenticeships and the micro degrees, the exciting part. <laughs> All right. Thank you, JC, for that on community colleges. Um, yeah, I think it's very important to uh, understand your other options between just the traditional four year. But even if you don't feel like a two or four year plan is for you, um, these options that we're going to be sharing right now are for you. Let's say if you want to get more into a trade um, or if you just want to build your skills, then these will be good for you, starting with apprenticeships. Um, so for those that don't know, an apprenticeship is a program that trains you to become skilled in a particular trade. Um, some examples that I have here are a phlebotomist, an electrician, um, working in cybersecurity, and many more. Um, and with apprenticeships, what it is, is you go and you do on-site training, um, but you're working as you're being trained. So you're learning basically on the job. Um, it's a lot of hands-on experience. And it's something that if you don't like the traditional classroom setting, you would be learning more on the job. Um, and there are many different apprenticeships programs out there. A good resource for you to look up is apprenticeship.gov. Um, this website provides apprenticeships that you can apply for in your area. And the good thing about this website is that it is a government website, so you won't have to worry about whether the apprenticeship postings are real or not, um, because that's something you would always want to watch out for is, um, you know, scams out there. So since it's a government website, you can browse with a little bit more security and um, ease of mind that it's a government website, right? Um, and also here, not just for this website, um, but throughout the slides that we'll present, 
We will have the Twitter, the Instagram, and the website. Um, we will also post the websites in the chat, just so if you want to write them down or save them, you can, um, so you can look at them on your own time. Um, that's apprenticeships, but there are also what we call micro-credentials. And so micro-credentials are digital certifications that verify your competence in a specific set of skills. Um, and so the difference between this and an apprenticeship is that an apprenticeship is, like I said, more in-person training, while micro-credentials um, will most likely be online and it can be showing your competence in a specific area. Um, so this is more for certifications. Um, one example that this website, Digital Promise, gives is if you're an educator and you want to build up your resume, um, you can get these micro-credentials um, where you show your aptitude in these specific skills, uh, and then you can always add that to your resume and show that you are more skilled and you are learning more as you grow, right? Um, and once again, this website is Digital Promise, um, and this website has micro-credentials available for you to receive. Um, I suggest you check the website out. Also, you have the Twitter, the Instagram, and once again, the website. Um, and if we can post those in the chat as well. Um, just something to look, look out for is that there are some that will have to be paid for and some which are free. So always do your research and see which ones are free. And if you would have to pay, maybe see which ones are in your range. Um, because I think always better is, is something free. Um, but if you have to invest, then it's not a bad investment. But once again, always do your research before you dive in. And then we have what's called a micro bachelor's. So micro bachelors teach you a new skill and provide you with a certificate of completion. Um, and many of these courses are available to you at no cost. Uh, and specifically this website, EDX was created by Harvard and MIT um, with the goal being access to free online courses from leading institutions worldwide. Uh, basically saying that it's not just Harvard and MIT, there are other institutions that provide courses. Um, and these are, about three course, maybe four course micro credentials. So it's not a two year program exactly. These are smaller, more digestible, but you still receive certification for completing this. Um, an example of courses offered through this website is the MIT mobile application and experiences course, uh, which can teach you how to create a mobile app. And with this website, um, same as Digital Promise, just doing research in which ones are free of charge and which ones may charge you. Um, and weighing out your options through there, which one you think would suit you best. And then we can go into certificate programs and trade schools. Um, these are more in the traditional sense, um, maybe not online, you would have to actually go to a site. Um, but one example here is on the left, the ASC certificate. Um, and it's not the only one, there are many more, but these certificate programs offer technical skills to help you gain expertise in a specific field of work. Um, and the example here is for automotive. Um, this certificate is for a master automobile technician. Um, they're usually six months to a year long in training and they will provide you the certificate after you complete the program. Um, and then even here in Southern California where specifically myself and JC are located, um, there is Cypress College and Cypress College offers three programs that we think are pretty cool. Um, the first one being the drone basic training, um, basic airline customer services. And uh, another one that I think is really cool is the automotive T10, the Toyota and Lexus specialist. Um, so basically what the Toyota one will focus on because that's the one I know the most is you work in conjunction with a Toyota or Lexus dealer. And as you learn, once you're done with the program, um, you have a good opportunity to receive a job from either Toyota or Lexus and one of the many dealers that we have here in California. So um, this is a cool program here if you're within Southern California, but um, we also serve the DC area. So we can also go ahead and look at that as well. And that's through Montgomery College in Washington, DC. Um, and they also have the certificate uh, programs available. Uh, for example, there's business, education, healthcare, public safety, and many more. Um, but that's not to say that these are the only two options. Um, we understand, like JC has said, that there are people in this call and 
probably the students you work with who are all around the nation. So the best advice is to research your local community colleges or trade programs to see what can be offered to you and even what partnerships these schools may have. Um, very similar to how the community college might have partnerships with universities. Um, the Cyprus example is they have partnerships with specific um, companies, right? So look for those as well and see if they can offer you more benefits like that. And we'll go to the next slide. Um, and here's some other examples that I didn't mention or that we didn't get the examples of, but um, also fall into these vocational certificate programs um, like pharmacy, pharmacy technicians, dental assistants, paralegals. Um, you know, I didn't know that you could be a paralegal without a degree, right? But it's all there, computer repairs, floral designers, medical assistants, and auto technicians or mechanics. Um, so it's all about just finding what you feel interests you the most and finding the path to make a career out of it. And then one more that we have is trade schools. Um, trade schools are specifically to get that certification. Um, and trade schools are good, but one thing to always look out for with trade schools is the cost because they can be costly. Um, so you wanna make sure that you can find one like, uh, for the example, LA Trade Tech or Los Angeles Trade Tech, where if you are under 18 years old, you do not have to pay out of pocket. Um, however, if you're over 18 years old, you will have to pay. So even if it's a couple classes that you take, um, it's better than paying for it. And so that's why we really emphasize seeing what is around your community and what type of classes they offer. Um, and so, yeah, just find offerings near your location and see if their programs that offer financial assistance, I think would be the biggest takeaway from this. And then some more options that are available. Um, and these ones, we try to have them as nationwide, like once again, just so everyone can access them. One of them is the Job Corps. Um, it's another option that's provided by the government to help you receive career technical training. Uh, specifically with the Job Corps, you can live on site while you're receiving training, as well as really receiving an allowance while attending. Um, and on the website, which we can also post in the chat, um, or you can write down right now, uh, you will find all the career centers and the trainings offered. Um, and like I said, these offer the option to live on site while you're being trained. Um, you just have to make sure that there is a Job Corps site near you. Uh, I know the nearest one for us here in Anaheim is in Long Beach. Um, so depending how close or how far away you are from there, um, you would really decide on if it's the right fit for you. Um, another one that we have that's not li listed on here, but we wanted to mention is City Year. Um, it's another resource that is available across the nation and it's a uh, focus is mostly with being college bound, um, but I advise everyone to look up City Year as well. Um, and you can get more information through there. Um, but these are just some of the opportunities that we felt would be most helpful. Of course, there is a big range of other opportunities available, um, but this is what we had so far. and. I'll go ahead and turn it back to JC. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself here. So yeah, we, we you know, the goal of our presentation is hopefully educate, you know, um, our attendees to kind of emphasize that there are many different opportunities that's available to you, as long as, you know, you take your time to talk to, you know, uh, network with people, uh, understand what the community college in your area and what they offer and you know just you know going to tr um, workshops such as this to open up your minds to you know to do that research and you know we wish you know we can done a little bit more research to provide um, additional sources you know sources that New York City or any of those areas we hope uh, you know that we were able to on this presentation but if ever, you know, um, we're going to put our, our information in the chat and we're also going to be, you know, as I said at the beginning, this is being recorded to you guys. Once we finalize the recording and edit everything, we are going to uh, be sending out um, emails you know, with our information and, and with this presentation, just in case you missed the beginning of this presentation. But you know, before we end, I just want to, you know, give you guys a chance to unmute yourself or you put it on the chat if you guys, if y'all, y'all 
have any questions, um, yeah, please, please feel free to unmute yourself. And I'll be looking into the chat as well. Mm, let's see, some of the questions are, are you, so one of the questions is, are we both community college graduate? Um, myself went straight to a four-year program. Um, so I went to Cal State China Island for my undergrad and master's at um, Cal State Long Beach. And Mr. Andres, I, um, you can say what, what, did you go straight to the community college, Andres, or four years? So I actually went to a four year as well. I went to Cal State Fullerton, but I think both myself, JC and, and Layla, we really understand the importance of not everyone has that option um, or maybe not everyone wants to do that option. So that's why we really are advocating for other options such as the community colleges. And, you know, there are a lot of stories of people that have gone through community college that have really done great things. So um, I feel like maybe before it's been seen as like a, maybe a stigma, but I think now it's being seen as something that is basically another resource that it can be provided to you. So I wasn't, but um, for those that were and that went through it, I think it's really good. And I'd like to add, you know, um, I did have family members and I did, I, I worked with, I've been, I've been student de development for almost eight years now. Like, wow, it's been a long, it's not a long time, but I've worked with many different um, students from cities to cities in LA. Now, you know, I think now I'm here at Orange County learning more. And I did work with a lot of students that, that, you know, um, high school wasn't their best, right? And I think that reason also for me and so passionate about this presentation is to be able to provide and encourage that the CC is not so bad, especially the way they revamp the, the, the situations of uh, community colleges across the nation, that it really, really, you know, um, enhance some of the things that, that you know, uh, students can do at the CC. Um, this Thank you. We appreciate the comment, um, Ms. Elizabeth. Um, yeah, no, I, I, you know, we do, we do agree that not everybody's going to think the full year or not even going to, everybody's going to think the two year and being able to provide like the apprenticeship program, the certificate program will can kickstart, kickstart their career. And maybe within, you know, half of their, by the time they get to their career and they're successful and they decide they, it's time for to go back to the four year, you know, they can have that experience. Right. So um, thank you. And um, do we have any other questions? I just want to show you guys this slide, this next slide here. You know that um, if you're a student or you know you're a family member, um, I just want to provide this comment. Education educators, I appreciate y'all for attending. But remember, if Plan A doesn't work, the alphabet has 25 more letters. So you have to just stay cool, network, and you know I, I and and search the community around you because I think for the most part we get so complacent, right? Complacent meaning like you know what the option was told me, or I learned that the four-year was the option, but, you know, you can't get complacent in that situation. You have to always seek because there's always different paths that, you know, that will help encourage and boost our morale, you know, like the CC or the, the apprenticeship programs. And I've heard a lot of successful stories doing the certificate program that are some making more, right. In comparison to the, uh, to, to, um, individuals who attended four-year programs, right? So yeah, we appreciate y'all. And I also want to do an additional plug. Um, oh, sorry, additional plug. Um, I know that we receive your, everyone's questions as far when we, um, you know, at, when, uh, before we close the event, right? And I saw that there was questions regarding, um, you know, undocumented uh, students and DACA information and resources. We are doing a presentation on that in February. So we're going to, um, it's going to be on Eventbrite pretty soon. We're going to publish it, but we're going to be doing a, a Pathways to Higher Education Undocumented and DACA Student February 16th. I do apologize. I forgot to drop the date on here. And then we're going to be doing a The Importance of Banking and Financial Planning presented by Chase Bank and us on February 24. 